So let's get some clarity from the department's acting DG. That's uh, Vusitem Bandima. Mr. Ndima, thank you so much for your time. It seems the minister here is saying it's all our fault. I mean, we ran with the story and we didn't check with the department whether or not this is official or not. So for some clarity, I mean, has the name change been adopted? Is it still a proposal? Where we are in terms of the name changes there? Thank you very much, uh, Tumelo. The name has been gazetted. The name has been gazetted, and what it means is that um, for the next 30 days, we will be expecting people to then say whatever they would want to say. Uh, if there are people who are against the name, they can still write to the minister, uh, and then the minister can review the decision depending on what the reasons are going to be for objection. Mm. But it's been gazetted as Rebecca or the names, because it was not only that name, there are a number of names that have been um, recommended for change by the, um, the Eastern Cape. It's Kabecha, uh, the one that is that tend to be popular. There is also the uh, East London Airport, which has uh, been renamed uh, King Palo Airport. The, uh, the, the airport at Kabecha is now David Stirman uh, 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 Airport. So those names have been gazetted. They are in the gazette. If you were to look at government gazette today, you would see those names. Right. But of course, we will expect people to comment. Uh, and if there are those that would want to, to challenge the name uh, within the next 30 days, they are allowed to do so. And, and with that being said, uh, Acting DG, I mean, when then can we expect to have the final uh, sort of statement from the department? I know you're saying that it, it takes at least 30 days for uh, engagement with the public, getting public opinion. Um, when can we expect a final decision on whether or not the names are officially changed or not? For instance, I think that the Gazette came out last week. One would have to count from the date of the Gazette to the 30 days and just counted the days uh, and then immediately after that, if there are no objections, those names uh, are going to be uh, there forever. Mm. And on the case, how much will it cost the government pocket to make these name changes? Should that be then the decision? Can you come again? In, in terms of the government pocket, how much will it cost government? How much will it cost the department um, to make the name changes? Should that decision then be final uh, to make those name changes? Look, maybe, maybe let me just also explain something to Melo. You know the department doesn't It facilitates. It serves as an authority that either approves or rejects. People who actually come up with the name changes are people at local government level, are individuals, are organizations. They have got an interest in ensuring that the pre-colonial identities are, are retained uh, people who are interested in the transformation of the naming landscape. Now, the costs, uh, more particularly, that arise out of this uh, exercise, they can be cost around signage. If you have to do uh, new si signage or signboards, right? Uh, if to come up with new letterheads um, in, in the papers that are used officially by those cities, but those are borne by uh, uh, municipalities. They are born by, for instance, um, uh, if you look at roads, uh, the South African Roads Agency, for instance, would bear the cost of um, implementing new signage. Mm. Um, and, and, and the cost uh, can only be about those things. Right. And the reason I'm asking, uh, Mr. Ndima, is because at times we've seen criticism against government to say, um, why spend that money on signages? Why spend that money whereas you could, taking, you could be taking it where there is a sort of service delivery needed there, infrastructure to be fixed there, or even basic needs such as either water, um, for example, be needed there. So hence, I suppose, my question around the cost to say, would it not cost an arm and a leg for government to make these changes? Changes. You know, to many people who use that argument, uh, they are not being honest. I'll tell you why. You know, the history of this country is a painful and a very traumatic history. It's a history where people who were indigenous in this country were uprooted from their places of, uh, of, of, of stay. Their names were just changed without any consultation. You had an imposition of names 
from the colonial masters or the then colonial masters without any due consideration of the interests of the indigenous inhabitants. Now, this is new government. This is a, a new political dispensation. If you look at the TRC recommendations, one of the things that were mentioned there was that there should be symbolic reparations. And symbolic reparation is about uh, renaming uh, spaces, it's about building new monuments, mm. memorials, museums, as part of the preservation of the history of the people of this country. The majority of people of this country who were downtrodden. And this process, we cannot therefore now use an economistic argument when people are beginning to identify themselves, beginning to recall and restore their pre-colonial identities right. using the pre-colonial nomenclature that used to exist, but because of some supremacist attitude of those who were invading this country, invading this land, they, those names just disappeared. Right. And this particular project, it's about restoring those identities. It's about correcting the wrongs of the past. So if we were to use the economic argument or economistic argument, I do not think that it would be sensitive mm. to so many people who, who died. I mean, if you look at the names of the airport, like King Palo, David Stirman, those are the people who laid their lives fighting against colonialism. Right. And that's the way that we can begin to pay tribute to those people. Well, you did mention, Mr. Dima, that there's still time for public engagement and that people can, of course, voice their opinions. I suppose we'll leave it to, to, to government to also hear what the uh, public has to say and that decision uh, when it will be announced. But thank you so much for joining us. That was the Department of Arts and Culture's acting DJ, Mr. Vusitem Bandima.